In some circumstances, however, calls need reinforcing with gestures. The sound of rushing water could drown out the calls of a frog. However, here in this stream in Panama, there's a species living alongside that has developed a novel way of dealing with that problem. The rare and wonderful golden frog. It does have a voice, but it's not loud. Individual males set up their territories beside the river and then wait for females to turn up. And since good positions for the territory are not common, they may have to hold them against intruders. And here one comes. Just in case his call is inaudible, he makes his message clear with a wave. And his rival waves back. He repeats his message so there's no misunderstanding. But rival is not deterred. Well, that makes things perfectly clear. Another arrives. Perhaps, at last, this is a female. No, it's another male. So there will have to be a wrestling match. That should teach him. And his rival signals submission by keeping his head down. Those females. And here she is. She is pure unblemished gold and much bigger than he is. The golden frog has a powerful poison in its skin so it can afford to be conspicuous. But most frogs find safety in camouflage. Yeah, you hear that? That's a male calling. We have another male crawling up over here, crawling up the rock face. Rick has his own low-tech method of finding them, which he assures me normally works. See, when you call, sometimes They'll call back and they'll reveal their location. Sometimes they're tucked away behind leaves and they're really difficult to find. Hopefully we can elicit a response. It's the fastest way to get them to shut up. <laughs> Was that him? Yeah, listen. Say that here. They're here. There's one over here. You see him right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like a male. Oh, yeah. I can do it again. You have to hum and whistle at the same time. I'll do it. See if he can.
Now we knew the frogs were still here, we could complete the filming. The local people have always treasured their remarkable little frog, but Eric was the first to document its signalling behaviour. Uh, it was an animal that was just walking. I wasn't sure if the animal was trying to flush out prey or if it was using it in a, in a, in a communication role. And so a group of us set out to look at whether or not this was communication. We tried uh, mirror presentations to the animals, and, and when you presented them with a mirror, they would hand wave at the mirror, as opposed to, say, maybe the back side of a mirror that didn't have a reflective surface. Some of us have looked specifically at an LCD screen, a, a little television with a hand waving, a semaphoring frog, and uh, it has elicited a number of responses, specifically from males. When you show a television picture to a male and he waves back. He waves back and he'll even call to the, really? to the male on the yeah. television screen. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. They then experimented with a life-size plastic model complete with waving arm, the sort of high-tech gear I thought I might manage to operate myself. It's not as easy as you might think. Eric showed me how it should be done. You've got to get that slow motion wave just right. The frogs waved. They called. They even attacked. So that wave really is a form of communication. So they're just saying, keep off, keep off. Huh? Is that right? We're not sure. Sometimes there seem to be certain hand waves that may indicate appeasement, showing that uh, I'm just walking through, perhaps, your, your territory. <laughs> don't, don't bother me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Ah, please. <laughs> but how endangered is the golden frog? This is it. What, what you see, you're, you're going to be the last crew to film these in the wild. <laughs>